This week on The Wire, home loans to become easier, investors upbeat on prices, and auctions bounce back after the shutdown. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm the Managing Director of Infinite Wealth and Australia's leading financial educator. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you're a first time watcher, welcome along. If you've been watching us for a long time, thanks for coming back. Uh, look guys, we love to see your interaction with these videos. So please like, love, angry, comment, questions. Uh, do a Q&A session once a week as well. So if you throw your questions in there, I'll come back and answer them each week. And of course, all we ask for in return of sharing this valuable information, particularly for people looking to get ahead, invest in property, is that you share this video on your social channels, uh, on, uh, on um, your timeline, so that uh, we can continue to get a bigger audience and of course your friends and family can get the benefit as well. So let's get into the top stories. Home loans to become easier. So one of the big four banks has hinted that getting a home loan may become a little easier following the Banking Royal Commission. So this was from ANZ Head of Economics, David Plank. He says that in terms of policy, most of the credit tightening measures are already in the system. He says that it's unlikely, particularly after the completion of the Banking Royal Commission, that any additional shocks, and for home buyers to expect increased competition amongst the lenders. So now that once all those things are in place, you're gonna to start to see lenders become more competitive in the space, which means things will probably start to get easier. What he said was, I think we'll see at the margin some relaxations, perhaps in criteria, as they think about what they're going to do with investor-only loans, particularly now that APRA have removed their restrictions. The regulator has made it clear that they don't wanna see any further tightening, so it's possible that the greater certainty might lead to some easing up on some of those credit constraints. So we know a lot of people out there have been well worried and struggling to get uh, loans approved. We might start to see now that the Banking Royal Commission is over, start to see some of this relax. And particularly as the financing numbers are down with the declines in Sydney and Melbourne, we're gonna to start to see banks get more and more competitive, uh, which could make it a lot easier for people to get home loans. So that's good news for investors. Also, we've seen investors are upbeat on prices. So most investors, aren't concerned with the state of the market, with many believing that the worst of the price falls, well, Sydney and Melbourne, we're talking about here, have already happened, and that's what a new report has found. So this is the report, ME's Household Financial Comfort Report. It reported that 86% expect to see values either rise or stay the same. Now, 18% of them expect to see them rise a lot, 34% uh, uh, expecting that they're gonna see uh, moderate price rises, and 34% believing they won't change. And that was particularly across the sim sim uh, similar trends we saw in Sydney and Melbourne. People are essentially feeling that the worst has, uh, has already come. So ME's consulting economist, Jeff Orton, says the general sentiment is that the worst has come and gone, and that most are waiting to ride out the current contraction. So this Household Financial Comfort Report is a survey about how people perceive their finances. It finds that the proportion of Australians feeling secure has risen quite dramatically. And this is the 15th biannual report, found income gains, it found easing living costs and increased savings were the key drivers in households feeling more comfortable. This came along with also uh, Commonwealth Bank CEO, Matt Corman. He doesn't expect house prices to fall much this year and he's expressed confidence in the health of the economy and the availability of credit. He said that he certainly doesn't subscribe to the theory that there is gonna be a rapid acceleration in downward pressure on house prices. He says, noting that even with a decline in Sydney, house prices remain 60% higher than what they were five years ago. So you gotta keep this in perspective when particularly you're gonna see uh, you know, bad news sells, a lot of the uh, extreme media coming out there, getting your clickbait by you know, just printing these ridiculous headlines, okay? Corman's comments also align with those of the Reserve Bank Governor, Philip Lowe. So the Reserve Bank is a great source of information if you wanna find out how the economy's going. They're not, they don't subscribe, you know, they don't need clickbait or anything along those lines. They always stay calm, they don't panic, they can give you some really um, clear, uh, non-emotional direction about what's happening in the market. So what um, uh, um, Lowe said, so this is Philip Lowe, the governor of the Reserve Bank, he said, importantly, unlike most other housing price corrections, this one has not been associated with rising unemployment or higher interest rates. Instead, mainly structural factors relating to the underlying balance of supply and demand in the larger cities have been at work. And of course, that's really only applying to the Melbourne and Sydney markets. Um, on top of that, Auctions bounce, bounce back after the shutdown. So uh, basically a lot of uh, auctions are starting up again after the Christmas and New Year shutdown. So an increase in auction volumes across the country last week resulted in a rebound in market confidence. So following the seasonal shutdown, Sydney recorded its highest preliminary clearance rate since July last year. There were 929 capital city homes taken to auction last week, which was up from 536 uh, auctions the week prior, with a na national average preliminary clearance 
clearance rate of 54%. So Melbourne was the busy, busiest market with 352 auctions held across the city last week, returning a preliminary clearance rate of 54%, and there were 321 Sydney homes that were auctioned, returning a preliminary clearance rate of 59%. This was the highest rate of any capital city and also the highest preliminary clearance rate recorded in New South Wales, in the New South Wales capital since the week of July 22 last year when 61% uh, uh, cleared. So once again, some more signs pointing to that we've seen, you know, some rapid declines, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne. However, the worst has come and gone. We start to see, we start to expect, particularly with the underlying factors, for this to flatten out. Prices not to ex are not expected to fall much more in the Sydney and Melbourne markets, particularly as we also start to see the markets pick up in places like Adelaide, Sydney, uh, so Adelaide, Brisbane, and Perth. So guys, that pretty much is the top stories from this week, the week in real estate. That's the week ending uh, Friday, the 15th of February. Hope that provided some great value. Once again, we'd love to see your comments, questions, uh, likes, love, angries, and of course, please share uh, the why with your friends and family so they can get the benefit of this and we can continue to build a bigger audience. Apart from that, guys, it's Friday. Hope you guys had a great week. Have a great weekend. I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Good night.